Good morning. God's people are judged kind of severely by him. Do other nations get a free pass? Our reading today is a lengthy one. It's Jeremiah. We're moving over to because we're following chronologically the book of Jeremiah. We're going to Jeremiah 46, verses 1 to 12. I'll speed through these, and then we'll just comment for a moment. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the nations, against Egypt, concerning the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish, and which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, defeated in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Order the buckler and shield and draw near to battle. Harness the horses and mount up, you horsemen. Stand forth with your helmets. Polish the spears. Put on the armor. Why have I seen them dismayed and turned back? Their mighty ones are beaten down. They have speedily fled and did not look back, for fear was all around, says the Lord. Do not let the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They will stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. Who is this coming up like a flood, whose waters move like the rivers? Egypt rises up like a flood, and its waters move like the rivers. And he says, I will go up and cover the earth. I will destroy the city and its inhabitants. Come up, O horses, and rage, O chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans who handle the shield, and the Lydians who handle the, and bend the bow. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge himself on his adversaries. The sword shall devour, it shall be satiated and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts has a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain you will use many medicines, you shall not be cured. The nations have heard of your shame, and your cry has filled the land, for the mighty man has stumbled against the mighty. They both have fallen together. So this segment is in chapters 46 through 51, and it contains a series of about 10 judgments on several different nations and tribes. And so we're going to work our way right through this. And we're going to go through this material a little bit more quickly than some of the other material we've looked at. You know what? Most of us don't know our history too well. It wouldn't be a bad thing to know more about the Battle of Carchemish and some of these other historical pieces. So in Jeremiah 46, verse 2 that we just read, Pharaoh, the, there was a, an increase in the power of Egypt, and the Pharaoh Necho was trying to increase the power of Egypt again, and Babylon came, and they had a battle up there along the northern part of the Euphrates River at this remarkable place called Carchemish. It's a very strategic location. And Babylon defeated Pharaoh. The Assyrian Empire had been ascendant for the past two centuries. But with the fall of Nineveh in about 612 BC, there was kind of a vacuum of power. And then the pharaoh in Egypt decided it was time to have a, a strengthening of the Egyptian empire. And so he began to go eastward. And that's how we got into this conflict with Babylon. So this battle of Carchemish happens around 604, 605 BC. And Babylon defeated Egypt quite soundly there. And you heard it in the text. And it was God's purpose to bring Egypt down a few notches. Sometimes it may have seemed that God's judgments against his own people were kind of relentless, but this reminds us, and these, these next 10 judgments are going to remind us that he also is judging all the other nations. They're all also very accountable too. It's not just God's people. They shouldn't feel singled out. Whenever any nation exceeds its boundaries, it's going to be put down a few notches or more. So never forget, God keeps the heathen accountable too. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, the nations rise and fall. You set up kings, you take them down. On their own, the different leaders feel like uh, it's their prerogative to rule the world. But many times they're cut down a lot because they have gotten carried away and think they're big britches when instead, Lord, they are very small potatoes. And Lord, this is a reason why we don't ever want to get all caught up in secular politics and all those intrigues and spending so much life energy on these things that don't matter so much. What matters is Seek, is seeking your kingdom first. What matters is seeking your righteousness first, and everything else will be sorted out. So, Lord, help us to seek your kingdom first. Help us to remember, Lord, you're running this thing, and nothing happens outside the boundaries that you permit them to. So, thank you for being aware and in control, Lord. We trust you going forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Other nations do not get a free pass. If they exceed their boundaries, God brings them back down to reality. Have a wonderful day because you are a servant of he who is on his throne.